If you think about gaming on a laptop, you probably think about every computer brand under the sun apart from Apple. Let's be honest here, gaming on a Mac OS is rubbish. But what about the specs? This latest 16 inch MacBook comes with 8 core i9 and Radeon 5500, good enough even for AAA games. So forget about Mac OS and gaming. In this video, I'll show you how to install Windows on this MacBook and how to tweak the GPU drivers so you can run pretty much any games you'd like. What's even better, you will be able to switch between Windows and Mac OS whenever you want. What's going on guys, Tom here again. I know, I know. On this channel we usually do content for video creators, motion designers, filmmakers and YouTubers, but I thought this video would be a nice addition for all of you who are tired after a long day of editing or creating and you just want to play some game on your MacBook. If you fall into that category but also want to learn about cool stuff like After Effects or Premiere, hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon next to it. Okay, why not get a Windows laptop, right? If you are a heavy gamer you would probably benefit from a dedicated Windows gaming machine, but what if you have a Mac MacBook that you use day to day? Well, wouldn't it be nice to make a proper multifunctional machine that you can run Mac OS and Windows at the same time and be able to play these AAA games on it? Of course it would! This new 16-inch MacBook Pro is, in my opinion, Apple's best laptop ever, from screen to keyboard, battery and few other things. If you are interested, I've done a full comparison of this 16-inch model to the previous generation and you will find a link over there or below this video. I've had a dedicated laptop for gaming in the past, but I found it really frustrating carrying two computers with me whenever I was going somewhere and just wanted to play a little bit of CSGO here and there. One thing you should also consider is the price tag of a good gaming laptop. They are quite expensive, so you will likely pay close, if not more, for a good gaming laptop. Of course, the performance will be better on those machines, but as you will see in a bit, this MacBook runs games on Windows at 60 FPS, no problem whatsoever. Before you do anything else, check your available space on your hard drive. I mentioned this in my 16-inch MacBook review video. Well, basically, if you plan on installing Windows on your MacBook, make sure to have enough space for it. Now, whatever you think you need, just double it and then double it again if you want to install these latest games on it. I would highly recommend you get at least one terabyte SSD on your MacBook. That doesn't mean you can't do this with 500 gig model. You just need to be more careful with your space management, especially if you're using this as a day-to-day -day computer where you have all of your apps and data. And even if you have a smaller drive in your MacBook, you can install most of these games on an external hard drive, so don't get discouraged, get creative! Enough talking, let's begin with downloading Windows. It's available to download on the official Microsoft website. Choose Windows 10, then your language, and finally click on the 64-bit version to begin downloading around 5 gig ISO file. While we are waiting for our Windows to download, we have a little bit of time for me to show you something you might have not heard about yet. Creating 3D animations from your photos. Yes, that's great. This video is brought to you by Photomotion, a toolkit for creating 3D photo animations from your static pictures. It works directly inside of After Effects on Mac or Windows, so you don't need any external 3D software. It comes with multiple tools designed for a variety of photo animations, such as phase animations, parallax movement, full 3D projections, landscapes, and almost everything in between, including cinemagraphs and plotographs. Photomotion is the only photo animation toolkit you will ever need to create high quality, professional looking animations from your pictures. And don't be afraid if you've never done any photo animation before, well I might be a bit biased here, but you really are in good hands. We've been helping our clients big and small with their animations for ages and we've built a library with more than 8 hours of video courses. We also have a dedicated motion design team on our live chat that will help you whenever you need. So if you are thinking about making your photos stand out from these ordinary images you see everywhere, give it a go. Try to make your own 3D photos. And of course, please do let me me know how and where you're using it. I'm always super excited to see what you guys create with it because some of these photo animations you've sent us are just mind-blowing. Keep them coming. Right, Windows downloaded, so let's install it by using a tool that comes with your Mac called Bootcamp Assistant. Let's open it, click continue, select your Windows ISO image here and then drag this thing to create a partition on your drive. Now be careful here because once the partition is created you won't be able to adjust it. 
It's up to you how much space you're willing to allocate to Windows, but keep in mind that anything below 100 gig might not be enough if you want to install games on it as well. These new AAA games are honestly huge, so if you have enough space to share, do it. Also, be aware that Windows won't be able to write to that Mac partition and vice versa unless you install a third-party tool like Mac Toolbox from Paragon. I have another video about that over there, but just know this, there is a way for you to access those partitions from both systems, so you don't necessarily have to have the same data on both sides. A pretty standard Windows installation follows where you choose things like language, if you have a product key you can add it here, if you don't you can still continue by clicking on I don't have a product key, you can always add this later. Hit next, select version you want to install, let's say Windows 10 Pro, next, next and then just wait for the installation to finish. When that's done select your region, keyboard layout, Wi-Fi and if you want to sign in with your Microsoft account you don't have to, just click on this offline account button and then confirm you're happy with with limited experience. I'll leave this to you. If you are within Microsoft the ecosystem already, it might be a good idea to log in with the same account to get access to, you know, OneDrive, etc. Otherwise, it's perfectly fine to choose an offline account. There's a bunch of other things Windows will ask. You can enable or disable them. Again, this is completely up to you. Now that we are officially in Windows, there are just a few things that we need to set up to give you the best performance while gaming. First one is the brightness of your monitor. If you intend to plug in an external monitor, it's a good idea to disable the one on your MacBook to give you a better GPU performance in games. In any case, if you do this, please leave your MacBook open while playing as these GPUs and CPUs, they generate quite a bit of heat and you really do want to maximize that heat distribution. Probably the most important thing for a proper gaming experience is the ability to install custom GPU driver for this Radeon 5500. By default, Bootcamp really restricts you in what kind of drivers you can install. No matter what you do, it seems to be installing these default drivers that are really not optimized for gaming. Thankfully, some good people online over at bootcampdrivers.com came up with a solution how to uninstall default Bootcamp GPU driver and install a custom game-ready AMD one. So let's do that. Head over to bootcampdrivers.com, hover over downloads, Windows 10, 2020 drivers and select Adrenaline Red Gaming Edition, that says the best FPS in games. Hit the green download button and while that's downloading, head over to Wagnard Soft. By the way, you will find all these links below the video. On this website, we need to download the latest version of Display Driver Uninstaller or DDU. Click on download and wait for both downloads to finish. When you have them ready to go, we'll need to restart into save mode to be able to uninstall the original GPU driver by using that DDU. To do that, hold down shift while clicking on restart from the start menu. This will show you a screen where you have to go to troubleshoot advanced options then startup settings and hit restart your MacBook will restart just remember to hold down alt until you see the boot selection so you can boot back into Windows this screen should appear where you press 4 and that will boot you into save mode when you are there let's open DDU select GPU here in this drop down and finally click on the clean and restart once your machine reboots again head over to start and type device manager hit enter and look for display adapters it should show you Microsoft basic display adapter. That's a good sign because we can now install our own GPU driver that we downloaded earlier. Just double click on setup and follow the instructions. If you see anything like keep drivers up to date, make sure that's unchecked because we don't want any automatic updates to be installed as they might not work in bootcamp. That's pretty much it when it comes down to setup. So let's see how it all works in games. Let's start with something simple like CSGO. Moving to more GPU demanding Call of Duty World War II and finally even more demanding Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The thing that actually prompted me to investigate if you can install these custom GPU drivers on Bootcamp was the issue in Modern Warfare that I had when some of these textures were just not rendering properly. Fortunately, installing these custom drivers fixed that issue. These games might look similar in terms of genre, but they have very different hardware requirements. So I picked them just to show you that this MacBook is perfectly capable of running pretty much anything you throw at it at this point. Of course, keep in mind you shouldn't expect ultra high settings in these later AAAs, but in my opinion, you will barely notice any difference while actually playing these games. One last tip I'll give you is to keep your battery charged at 100% and plugged in because it seems there are games that push this MacBook to extremes when it drains your battery even when it's connected. I have to do a proper testing of this but it already happened twice when I started with 30% of battery plugged in the charger and it still drained the whole thing down to 0%. I haven't noticed this behavior when my computer was charged at 100% so it looks like GPU might be using too much power while your charger is trying to 
charge the battery at the same time. There are a bunch of other things you can do and should do, like enabling access to your Mac drive from within Windows and vice versa, and also updating your touchpad drivers so you can use full multi-touch capabilities of your MacBook touchpad. I highly recommend checking this video over there. For all of that, as in this one, I wanted to focus purely on gaming performance. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, comment below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button with the bell icon next to it so you don't miss out on new videos. In any case, have fun gaming on your MacBook and I'll see you in the next one.